you know, on this channel, we talk an awful lot about Jesus Christ being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And what I mean by that is that Jesus is the one that we look to, you know, to, to do what he says, right? He gives us our marching orders as individuals, as families, as churches, as governments. He's the one who uh, get, has commandments that we must follow, that we're obligated to follow, and all of that kind of thing. He's our master. You know, he's the you know, we're the servant. He's the master. The servant does what the master wants him to do. That's what we mean when we say Jesus Christ is the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. But the Bible gives other titles to Jesus. And one of the other important ones is uh, he's the high priest. The book of Hebrews says that he is the high priest after the order of of Melchizedek. Now, a priest does uh, performs a variety of functions, right? A priest is a mediator. It, it's it's in, in the Old Testament, the priests were the ones who offered the sacrifices to God. They were set apart for this duty, right? So not just anybody could offer a sacrifice to God. It was the priest's job to do that. They were the mediator. They stood between God and the people and all of that. Now, that's what Jesus does for his people today, right? So his sacrifice was once for all and he's our mediator. That's why we have access to God the way we do. That's why we can be a royal priesthood only through the mediation of Jesus Christ, right? That's why we gather on Sundays and we uh, can approach God uh, without uh, completely being destroyed, right? That's why, you know, when Christ looks or when God looks at me, he doesn't see my sins. He doesn't see the wrong things I've done. Rather, he sees me as perfectly holy it's through Christ. It's through Christ's mediation because Christ was perfect, because Christ offered his own body as a sacrifice for his people's sins. That's how God looks at me and doesn't see a, a, a ridiculous sinner. He sees the righteousness and the holiness of Jesus Christ. The priesthood uh, of, of, of Christ, being the high priest, is critically important. Now, in our time, you know, in, in 2021, there are lots of people that— claim to be essentially our master, right? They claim to be the king, the one that gives commands, the one that law comes from. There's lots of fake claimants to the throne in 2021. I mean, the federal government, the state governments, even local governors sometimes try to come up with laws and make up moral commands that come out of nowhere. And uh, they think they fancy themselves little gods, right? They're very hor horrible, pathetic little gods, but they think that they're gods. They want to be honored as gods. And likewise, there are also priests that um, claim that throne as well, that title of high priest, and um, they're just pathetic excuses for priests. Um, I, so I want to talk a little bit about the, the new priesthood today, but before I do that, I did want to revisit this video, right? So this is the official video. Um, it's from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, so this is the bureaucracy. They tapped Reverend Kim, Walter Kim, a Presbyterian minister. My goodness, I can't even imagine. Uh, we'll get to that. But it's called Trusted Voices on COVID-19 vaccine, COVID Vaccine Acceptance. So this is a propaganda piece that they want to convince Christians. So they, they have a, different, a few different videos like this for each community. And this is the Christian one. They tapped Walter Kim to carry water for them. And so um, he was all too willing to do this. And he did it with a smile on his face. He's very mild-mannered. He speaks softly like a PBS announcer, I saw somebody say in the comments. And so he's disarming. But what he's doing is so perverse. What this man did in this propaganda piece is perverse. Let me play it from the beginning. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I want you to hear something. I think the vaccines are a gift from God. In our current circumstances with this pandemic, getting vaccinated is one of the best expressions of loving our neighbors. Christians have an opportunity to be the leading edge in loving our neighbors. And I would urge my brothers and sisters in the faith um, to reflect that desire to love our neighbors by getting vaccinated. All right, so let's stop right there. That's what I wanted to cover, because I don't want you to miss what he just said. Now, yesterday we, we covered the fact that when he says loving your neighbor, and that's what getting the vaccine is, a, is an example of loving your neighbor, what he's doing is he's actually creating a law out of thin air. He's creating morality. He's saying it's a matter of holiness. If you want to be holy like God is holy, then one of the things you need to do is to get the vaccine. Now, that is pharisaical. That is evil. That is someone who is completely... 
uh, lost his bearings when it comes to what he should be preaching, right? Because a Christian preacher needs to preach the book, right? And so what the book says, that's what you say. You're a servant. You don't get to make up laws. You don't get to make up moral commands or obligations or holiness codes or things like that. This is why I'm against masks at church, right? Well, at least forced masks at church. If you want to wear a mask at church, that should be your right. But when they force you to wear a mask, what you're doing is saying, look, I'm making a rule to decide whether or not you're clean or unclean for worship. A pastor is not allowed to do that. That is something that is perverse. That is something that doesn't come from their authority from God. They're just usurping that authority, and they're creating moral codes. They're creating holiness codes for you to be able to worship with your congregation. So that's perverse. We covered that yesterday. God says that the love your neighbor as yourself is a summary of the law, and here is Walter Kim saying, get the vaccine. It's a matter of loving your neighbor as yourself. So he's adding to the law. We covered that. But I wanted you to hear the part where he said, Christians have an opportunity to be the leading edge of loving our neighbors. And what's that opportunity to be the leading edge? What is the leading edge of loving our neighbors? It's not the book. It's not Leviticus. It's not Deuteronomy. It's not James even. No, it's whatever the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says it is. It's hard to fathom having the audacity the balls to say this as you are presenting yourself as a minister of God. A minister, that's another word for deacon. That's another word for servant, right? Um, you're, 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 not, you're not able to do your own thing. You can only do what God has said, and God has spoken in the book. He's spoken, right? And so you have a very narrow uh, mission, right? You can't just make stuff up. But here is Walter Kim saying that the leading edge of loving your neighbor as yourself is whatever the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services said. I don't think I have to convince the people in this audience that that is absolutely satanic because the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says a lot of crazy things. And and the reality is that the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and all the rest of the bureaucracy as well, they usurp a lot of authority from God. They actually don't honor God as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They don't honor Christ as the King over them. They don't honor Christ as the Lord over them. They don't see their role as a servant to Christ, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Rather, they seek to usurp some of that authority. They think that they can decide what is moral and what is immoral. They think they can decide what makes you clean or unclean, what makes you holy or unholy. They create laws like that all the time. In fact, you know, we talk a lot about the transsexual stuff and, uh, you know, giving uh, hormones to children and stuff like that. Look, the reality is that, that this mentality of saying that the leading edge of loving your neighbor as yourself is something other than what you would find in the book, that is one of the most perverse things that I could imagine a Christian minister uh, teaching. I, I can't believe he had the audacity to say that with a freaking smile on his face. It's unbelievable. And so here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is not the ultimate God. Right? They're, they're, they, they do see themselves as God in their ridiculous, perverse system. But because they're secular, that means that they're pagan as well. And so they do have authorities over themselves. If they don't look at it as Christ, even though it is actually Christ. But they do have an authority over themselves. And I believe that we see in the book of Romans what happens with secular pagans. What they end up doing is they end up worshiping the creation rather than the creator. That's a biblical uh, thing there. That's that's a, almost a direct quotation from the book of Romans. People that reject Christ end up worshiping and serving the creation. In other words, nature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. So they actually have a God and it's nature. It's mother nature. But you see, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services needs a mediator because they actually don't know how to read what nature is saying. They don't know how to appease nature. So they need a mediator. And so what they need is a priesthood. 
the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, which Walter Kim here is unbelievably carrying water for, needs a priesthood to mediate between them and their God, which is the creation, which is nature. And so there is a priesthood. I wanted to show you this video, this article, and um, I saw this talked about just the other day by George Gammon. If you don't follow George Gammon, he's an economist. He's a he's a, a, a business guy. Really awesome content. I love him. I like his style. But anyway, he talked about this article just the other day, and it's actually from a, about a year ago. And it's from Forbes magazine, and I think it identifies uh, what the priesthood actually is in our culture. See, our system right now, we have a state worship system. We have a religion, a state religion. It's a secular, pagan, awful religion, but we have it. And unfortunately, Walter Kim is carrying water for it. Here's what the article says. This is by a guy named Ethan Siegel, and the article is titled, You Must Not Do Your Own Research When It Comes to Science. You must not do your own research when it comes to science. Here's what the first couple paragraphs say. Listen to this. Research both sides and make up your own mind. It's a simple, straightforward, common sense advice. And when it comes to issues like vaccinations, climate change, and the novel coronavirus, it can be dangerous, destructive, and even deadly. So you see how it's setting this up. Like, like most people are not set apart for the work of understanding science and this kind of stuff. We, we can't decipher what our gods are telling us. Most people can't. That's why we need a priesthood set apart in order to do this. You see, you see how this is presented, right? Nature is their God, and most people are not priests. Most people are not set apart to understand nature, and when they try to, it's dangerous, destructive, and deadly. The article continues, the techniques that most of us use to navigate most of our decisions in life, gathering information, evaluating it based on what we know, and choosing a course of action can lead to spectacular failures when it comes to a scientific matter. The reason is simple. Most of us, even those of us who are scientists ourselves, lack the relevant scientific expertise needed to adequately evaluate the research on our own. In our fields, we are aware of the full suite of data and how those puzzle pieces fit together and what the frontiers of our knowledge is. When laypersons espouse opinions on those matters, it's immediately clear to us where the gaps in their understanding are and where they've misled themselves in their reasoning. When they take up the arguments of a contrarian scientist, we recognize what they're overlooking, misrepresenting, or omitting unless we start valuing the actual expertise that legitimate experts have spent a lifetime developing doing our own research could lead to immeasurable and unnecessary suffering. You see, this article is presenting this case here that you're essentially too stupid, too immoral, too unwashed, too common to understand what our God is telling us. And so we will tell you what the commands of our God are. And if you don't listen, if you don't obey the commands of our God, that we will tell you, we will mediate them for you, we will interpret them for you, that will be dangerous, destructive, and deadly. And you can see what they're setting up here, vaccinations, climate change. Look, they want control of it all, right? Even the very, like, like the nature of our world, weather, weather. Like these are the calamities that Christ actually brings upon nations that rebel against him, that reject him. It's famine, it's weather, it's, you know, economic disaster, it's, you know, pestilence. But they say, no, 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 it's not Christ that's in charge of that. It's actually our God, our God, which is the creation, the nature, and we have our own priesthood. Christ is not the high priest. We have our own priesthood that will tell us what to do, what's moral, what's the right choice. And you, your role is to just do what we say. And the way that they command it, is through the United States Department of Health and Human Services. See, the United States Department of Health and Human Services tries to take on the role of king, and they've got a priesthood. The king goes to the priesthood and says, priesthood, tell us what God wants, because they both worship and serve the creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And so the priesthood is all too happy to say, yes, we will tell you, and we can't really show you what we're doing. I mean, the research is too complicated. You wouldn't understand. So we'll just go behind this curtain, and then we'll come out, And we'll tell you what the fates say. 
We will tell you what the gods say, and then you just do it. And if you don't, the pestilence will never end. If you don't, the famine will never end. If you don't, and you see this, you can see how this works itself out in other ways as well with the abortion issue. There, there, there's, there's people trying to appease their, 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 their death god, their bales. There are people trying to appease gods all over the place, right? And we've got a priesthood. And the United States Department of Health and Human Services is all too happy to reach out to that priesthood the way Leonidas in 300 reached out to the ethos, 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 to find out what to do. They've got, the, they've got a false king. They've got a false priesthood. They've also got false prophets, and I have to say, like, like, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> Let me try to be nice for a second. Their little propaganda videos feature their false prophets. Let me just say that. Do with that what you will. But you see what Walter Kim has done here is, is he's replaced the words of God with the words of a false God. He's replaced the words of God, the commands of God, love your neighbor as yourself, and what you can find, the very simple command. You see, God's burden is light. Christ's burden is light. God's commands are good, they're holy, and they're simple. Man's commands are complicated, and they make no sense, and they're actually upside down. They actually cause harm rather than uh, cause good, right? And so, but, but Walter Kim is all too happy here to say, no, no, the leading edge of loving your neighbor is what the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services got from their priests. They got it from the creation. And he even has the audacity in this video to say that Jesus would teach you to do this as well. Jesus would teach you to get the vaccine as well. He would tell you that the leading edge of loving your neighbor as yourself is what the United States Department of Health and Human Services has said. I can't believe he had the audacity to do it. I mean, lots of people believe this kind of nonsense, but I can't believe he had the audacity to do a propaganda video promoting as he sets up his church in this bizarre, perverse kind of a way where he's got sections for the clean and the unclean, where he's decided that he's going to do what God has not commanded him to do. He's going to add rules and morality and cleanliness codes where God has not required him to do that, and he has, he's totally comfortable with that. And he'll do it with a smile on his face. He'll do it with a smile on his face and mild-mannered words. Guys, this is this is way more serious, this kind of mentality. It's not just Walter Kim. So don't hear me saying, I'm just not singling him out. There's a lot of pastors that have this exact mentality where they think that the leading edge of being uh, good and righteous and holy is literally whatever CNN says. You remember that Gospel Coalition article where he talked about being a radical Christian and every radical point was essentially the exact argument that CNN or MSNBC was giving? Like, th that was Brett McCracken. Yeah, Brett McCracken had done that. This is upside down, guys. You, you, you're not going to be on the leading edge of morality by following what Babylon is doing. Unreal. Unbelievable that I even have to say it. I hope you found this video helpful. God bless. Oh, by the way, <laughs> in the, uh, the videos that I was doing about um, death penalty offenses and stuff like that, I can't believe this, but, but some of the pro, like, listen and believe people are, like, somehow shocked that... I believe that you should have a trial before you're convicted or before you people treat you as if you're a, a criminal. Like, people have to be cross-examined and stuff like that. In fact, one person said that that's moving the goalposts, that I was moving the goalposts because I said at first that you need to have two or three witnesses and that's how you're convicted. And then they said, well, now you're moving the goalposts, AD, because now you're saying they need to be tried in a criminal court. And i got to be honest, like, I, I didn't think I had to say that, right? Like, I didn't think that I had to say specifically that they had to be tried. Like, this is basic biblical stuff, right? Yes, two or three witnesses, but those witnesses ought to be cross-examined cross in a law court. You can't just say, you can't just gather two or three people, make an accusation, and then, okay, that means they're guilty. No, it doesn't mean that they're guilty. It means that there are two or three witnesses. Now we need to see what those witnesses are saying. Does it match up? Are they trustworthy witnesses? And all of that. Now, if you have a problem with the way that is done, I'm okay with reform there. That's okay. But what I'm not going to do is say, 
all right, well, you have a problem with the way that's taken care of, and now I'm going to join your lynch mob. I'm not freaking going to join your lynch mob no matter how much you call me a baddie for it. Because the reality is, I take sex abuse and rape and all that way more seriously than you do, and I think that makes you uncomfortable, so now you want me to join your lynch mob. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen.